Alright, so we're doing the Riddle and Worksheet, which is on Edmodo. We did this in class today as well. Question number one says to write the molecular formula of Ritalin. You see the molecule drawn on the side. It's got carbons, hydrogens, oxygens, and nitrogens. And the formula of a compound with those elements is written in that order, Chon. Just count in the molecule how many carbons, hydrogens, oxygens, and nitrogens there are, and put down subscripts to reflect that. So when you count them up, you can pause the video here and do this yourself. If you add them up, carbons there were 14. 14. Yeah. Hydrogens 19. Oxygens 2 and 1 nitrogen. You don't need to put a subscript 1 down. Question 2 says find the molar mass and show your work. So do this in this way. There's 14 moles of carbon in one mole of Ritalin. Using the molar mass, we can get rid of moles and switch to grams of carbon. 12.01 grams for every mole. And that's going to tell me how many grams of carbon are in one mole of Ritalin. Pause the video and do the same thing for hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. 19 moles of hydrogen. Get rid of the moles, switch to grams of hydrogen. Periodic table. Oxygen, same way. And finally, nitrogen. Pay attention to sig figs when you're doing this. Usually when I do molar masses, I keep two decimal places. 99% of the time that will agree with sig figs. Hydrogen can sometimes be irritating in that way. So 14 times 12.01. I have 168.14 grams of carbon. 19.19 grams of hydrogen, 32.00 grams of oxygen, and 14.01 grams of nitrogen. If you add all that up, you've got the molar mass of middle. Let's get to Two thirty-three thirty-four. Yep. So two hundred and thirty-three point thirty-four grams is the molar mass of Ritalin. Um, most usually you don't show your work like this unless the question specifically wants you to find a molar mass. Um, normally you would just pick up a calculator, look at a formula, and just type all that in on a calculator in one step, right? All right, question number two on, or sorry, three on the worksheet takes you to a new concept. Not that hard. It says, what is the mass percent of oxygen? Mass percent of oxygen in riddle. We'll often leave out the term mass. We'll just say, what's the percent of oxygen in Ritalin? And you'll just assume it means by mass, unless it specifically says something different. Um, it's not a super hard concept, right? Especially given what you just wrote in question two. The percent oxygen. Kinsley, what will I do there? Uh, to get the percent of oxygen, you would take the mass. So there's what? Um, that would be 32. So there were 32 grams of oxygen back divided in question by. two, divided by um, the, mass of the, the molar mass of the compound, 233.34, and times by 100. And that's going to give you the mass percent of oxygen, right? Um, watch your sick figs. 32 divided by 233.34 times 100. We want four significant digits, 
0.71% oxygen. If you did that for carbon, for hydrogen, for nitrogen, and add it all up, you should get 100%, right? So this is all, all of the elements in the compound. In a few minutes, we're going to take that idea and we're going to work backwards. We're going to give you the percent composition of a compound, and you're going to see if you can go back and find its formula. So let's jump in. Question number four. We're using unit multipliers. A sample of Ritalin has a mass of 0 0.015 grams. How many molecules of Ritalin are in that sample? So 0 0.015 grams. Now, if you want to use an abbreviation like RIT, Ritalin, that's fine. If you want to put the chemical formula down, that's fine. But put some label down, OK? That makes sense. So I'll put C14H19O2N. It's kind of a big, ugly formula. It's a little irritating to write all the time, but what the hell? What can I convert grams into? You know, grams can go to kilograms, if you like, but that's kind of not helping. Grams can go to moles using what? What would be my multiplier to go grams to moles or moles to grams? The molar mass of the compound. So we can get rid of the grams and we can switch to moles of the Ritalin. One mole weighs 233.34 grams. That was my molar mass. But the question doesn't want to know how many moles of Ritalin. It says how many molecules. Ritalin is a covalent compound, right? Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. So it's made of molecules. Is this answer going to be really big or really small? How many molecules are in 0.015 grams? 0.015 grams isn't a lot, but molecules are really, really small. So the answer is going to be unbelievably large, right? And what does an unbelievably large number look like? It'll be in scientific notation on my calculator, and it'll have a positive exponent on it, times 10 to the positive something. So I'm looking for that kind of answer. So let's throw one more multiplier on here. I'm going to get rid of my moles, and I'm going to switch to molecules, OK? This is Avogadro's number, right? So Avogadro's number, what is it? One mole would have 6.022 times 10 to the 23, OK? It always kills me on tests when kids say times 10 to the negative 23. Right, that number one, they don't know Avogadro's number, and number two, they don't know scientific notation. Right? It should be a huge number, not a tiny number. So the answer here will give me molecules of riddle. Right. When you're typing that in on your calculator, be sure you're using the scientific notation button. I'm going to pause this video and grab the calculator and do that there. I guess I've got to lift up the calculator to do this. So 0.015, 0 0.021, 0 0.025, 0 0.025, divided by the molar mass, 233.34, and then times Avogadro's number, times 6.022, and then times 10 to the 23 is done using the scientific notation button, second function EE e on a second function EE e on a graphing calculator, or EXP on a normal scientific calculator, and then 10 to the power of 23. So put a 2, 3 at the end of that, and then equals 3.8711 blah 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 E19. So times 10 to the 19. How many sig figs should be in the answer here? Two. Just two. So the answer is going to be 3.9 times 10 to the 19. And that matches what we expected a few minutes ago. It's a huge, huge number, right, of molecules.
please be sure you're not just copying this. If you're watching the video, you should be pausing it and doing it yourself to check. If you're sitting here in class, look up now and then to see if you're getting it right, but don't just sit and take notes now, right? That's not going to be helpful to you. Question number five, get a mental estimate of this before you even do it on, on your calculator. It says you need 0.375 moles of riddle. What mass would that be? How many grams is that? When we go to the lab, we don't have a device that measures out moles. If we needed to use 0.375 moles, we'd grab an electronic balance and we'd measure out how many grams we need. So you have 0.375 moles of riddle. How many, um, how many grams will that be? Can you estimate it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, one mole of Ritalin weighs 230 some odd grams. 0.375 mole, well that's, you know, a third is 0.333, right? And 230 something is close to 240, so the answer is going to be about a third of 240. It's going to be around 80 something grams, right? If you can do that kind of mental math, then on a multiple choice question on a test, you might not even have to do any kind of work. You just go do that in your head. The answer's got to be close to 80. Look, there's only one choice that's close to 80. There I've got it. Okay? So let's do this with unit multipliers. Get rid of moles, switch to grams of Ritalin. And this is my molar mass again. When you've got grams and moles in a multiplier, molar mass, one mole of Ritalin, 233.34 grams. And that should be 80 something. We want three significant digits in our answer. I get 87.5 grams. Knowing how to use significant digits is important, not just for a question like this, but practically in the lab. Um, if I ask the lab assistant to go get me 0.375 grams, I'm sorry, moles of Ritalin, she only needs to weigh out 87.5 grams. She doesn't have to grab the milligram balance and weigh out 87.500 grams. She can do it pretty quickly on a, on a simple balance because it doesn't have to be that accurate. 87.5 grams has three sig figs in it, so really that's all she needs to, to do. Okay? 87.48 would be fine. That's 87.5, right? Round it off. Question number six. How many moles of Ritalin are in a bottle that has 100 grams of the, of the compound? You've got 100 grams of Ritalin. How many moles is that? Can you estimate that in your, you know, without doing the, the actual calculation? David, what do you think? Um, well, okay. So the molar mass was 233, and 100 is just under half of that. Therefore, it's going to be just under half a mole, right? So 0 0.4, 0 0.4 moles, something like that. Make sense? All right, so let's do the calculation. Get rid of your grams of Ritalin, switch to moles of Ritalin. Molar mass again. Pay attention to sig figs. We got four significant digits in it, so 0.4286 moles. Right? Do not confuse moles and molecules, right? Two totally different things. Question number seven. Gets a little tiny bit harder here. We know that the compound Ritalin has carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen in it. Question 7 is asking how many atoms of hydrogen would be in 0.75 moles of Ritalin. 
that's not something I'm going to try to estimate, okay, other than saying the answer is going to be huge, right? The number of atoms in 0.75 moles is going to be huge. One mole is Avogadro's number of molecules, so three quarters of moles is going to have a huge number of atoms. So 0.75 moles of Ritalin, C, C14H19O2N. We're going to need that formula this time. Omid, what will I, what would be logical to do here? I want to know how many atoms there are in 0.75 moles. How many atoms of hydrogen? So what do you think we can do here? Well, There's more than one way to do this. So you're saying we could convert this to grams of Ritalin? Yeah, and then the cross multiplication. We're using unit multipliers all the way through. Okay, taking it to grams, which is possible because we have a molar mass, would not be wrong, but it would not be the fastest way to go. See if this makes sense to you and imagine unit multipliers each step. Ready? We can convert the moles of Ritalin, as was just suggested, to grams of Ritalin using its molar mass. Grams of Ritalin, we know how many grams of hydrogen are in 233 grams of Ritalin, don't we? On the front side of this page, we, we wrote down what? There were 19.19 .19 grams of hydrogen in 200. So once we know how many grams of Ritalin there are, we can convert that to grams of hydrogen. Grams of hydrogen could be converted to moles of hydrogen, and moles of hydrogen could finally get us to atoms of hydrogen. So that would work with about four or five unit multipliers. There's a faster way to go, though. Moles, instead of taking it to grams using molar mass, instead we could use Avogadro's number right away, and we can convert moles to what? Not quite, wrong, wrong word, because we're talking about moles of Ritalin, which is a compound and a covalent compound. So it's going to be made up of molecules, right? So we can go from moles to molecules of Ritalin. This number would be huge, wouldn't it? And you see now, with one more multiplier, we're done. What can we do now? We can get rid of molecules and switch directly now to atoms of hydrogen. Okay, let's deal with the first one. One mole would have Avogadro's number of molecules. If you know Avogadro's number, you know it by heart, you don't have to think, I now know it because I've written it down 20 times, then you can start abbreviating it in your work by writing capital N subscript capital A. Okay? Don't put capital N little a because that would be sodium, right? Capital N capital A, Avogadro's number. Okay? If you still don't quite know it, then keep writing it until you do. Just be smart, right? What's the second multiplier? How many atoms of H and molecules of Ritalin? C14H19O2N. What can we see from the formula? One molecule of Ritalin would have what in it? Nineteen atoms, right? Now, just to be clear, in one mole of Ritalin, you'd be right. There'd be 19.19 .19 what? Grams of hydrogen. But we're not talking about moles now. We were talking about molecules. In one mole, a particle, a single particle of Ritalin, that particle which we saw a picture of on the front page, has 19 atoms of hydrogen in it, doesn't it? Okay? So there's the, the correct language. Would this have also worked? So there's my first answer. You might want to write down a second way to do this. There's actually several ways, but here's another way which is equally fast, but you just think about it slightly differently. Take your moles of Ritalin, 
But instead of switching to molecules of Ritalin, switch from moles of Ritalin to moles of hydrogen. So moles of Ritalin to moles of hydrogen. How can you do that? The key is, again, thinking of the chemical formula. But this time, instead of thinking of it as a molecule of Ritalin made up of atoms of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, now think of it as a mole of Ritalin made up of moles of carbon, moles of hydrogen, moles of nitrogen. Does that make sense? So in one mole of Ritalin, there are 19 moles of hydrogen. Go back and look at question two. Isn't that what we said in number two? There are 19 moles of hydrogen in one mole of Ritalin. What would my second multiplier be? Moles of hydrogen to atoms of hydrogen using what? One mole has Avogadro's number, right? And if you compare those two methods, they're doing the same thing, just backwards, right? Times by Avogadro, times by 19, times by 19, times by Avogadro. You're going to get the same answer. All right? Be sure you're comfortable thinking in both of those ways. Those are both very common ways of setting up that question. One more pro problem on this worksheet, question number eight. What mass of carbon would be in 30.0 grams of Ritalin? What mass of carbon? How many grams of carbon? Given what we did on the front side of this worksheet, this is this could be done in one unit multiplier, right? Only because of what we've already done on the front side of the sheet. I'll show you how to do that, and then we'll we'll do it also in a slightly longer way. We can get rid of the grams of Ritalin and switch to grams of carbon because we know already that in 233.34 grams of Ritalin, how many grams of carbon were there? 12.01 times 14. There was 168.14 grams. And notice, even if you hadn't done the stuff on the front side of the sheet, does that make sense to you? Yeah. Could you have just picked up your calculator and done what, I, what we just did right there? There's 14 times 12.01, so there's 168. That would work, right? With one multiplier, we've just found how many grams of carbon there are. What's a slightly longer way to do it? Some teachers, when they teach grade 11 chemistry, they drill into students' heads that grams should almost always be converted directly to moles. Really, grams to moles. It's like by reflex. When your kid sees grams, they convert to moles. If you do that, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna stop writing on the formula here because I'm getting lazy. Get rid of grams, switch to moles, but now I'm gonna put moles of Ritalin in there. What could you now do? Moles of Ritalin you could convert to moles of carbon. And then moles of carbon to grams of carbon. Not that much more work, but three multipliers instead of one. What would be the first multiplier? One mole is 230. This is my molar mass of Ritalin, right? What's the second multiplier? Moles of carbon to moles of Ritalin? That's based on the formula, right? One mole of Ritalin had 14 moles of carbon. And finally, the molar mass of carbon. And if you compare what we're doing here to what we did right above, isn't it exactly the same? 
14 times 12.01 is 168.14, and then we're dividing by 233.34, so we're going to get the same answers, right? Mathematically, they're doing the same things, right? All right, we're going to stop this video, and then we're going to create a new one for a new topic.